How do you install the leash and how do you tie in? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highlight. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to go into how to install a leash and how to tie into it. In case you've never seen a Highline or a video with a Highline in it, the first thing you need to know about installing the leash is that it goes on both the main line and the backup line. Hey, keep it a basic, I didn't know when I rigged my first line. So a useful tip is to actually put the leash on the webbing when you're at home. In fact, you should get your entire rig set up and flaked into a bag at home. When you do that, you're gonna to wanna to figure out what side of the high line you're gonna want your leash on. Is the person on the far side gonna slide over after it's all rigged? Or would you rather have it on the tension side after it's all set up? And sometimes it's more convenient to install two leashes on your high line, especially the longer they get. This might be an obvious tip, but don't forget to put the leash on before installing the webbing and the web locks. I know it seems obvious, but I forget to put the leash on before the web locks more than half the time. In fact, I forgot to put it on when I set up for the scene. Damn it. If you are gonna send the leash over to the far side so your partner can slide over when they're done, make sure you clip it to something so they can reach it after they're done pulling the tag line. Instead of tying it to the end, it's nice to have a separate veener so they can clip it to something out of their way while they're managing all of this. And if you wanna keep the leash on the tension side while you slide the webbing over, clip it to somewhere on the anchor so as the webbing slides through, the leash stays on your side. And when you're done highlining and you untie from the leash, make sure you tie the tail off to something at the anchor so the leash doesn't just slide down to the middle of the high line. So now it's time to tie in. And there's only five steps you need to know. Good luck remembering five separate things when you're stoked to get on a high line. Guess where almost every high line leash is? Near the cliff edge. So step one is to have a built-in personal anchor on an auto locker so you're safe while tying into your leash. So step two is to grab the leash and check for twists. the last person who walked turned around a lot or they fell and spun a lot, then your leash could be twisted. The problem with the twist in your leash is not only is it kinked while you walk, but in something like that you can get your finger, your arm, your neck, your leg, or your dick if you're doing a naked scent. The two most common injuries on a high line are probably falling near a cliff edge and hitting the cliff or getting something caught in your leash. Step three is to check the knot at the ring. You want to make sure that it's a figure eight and you want to make sure that it's not rock hard so it retains most of its strength. So massage it a little bit and make sure that it looks safe. Step four is to measure it. If you tie in too short, you won't be able to stand up all the way and you'll be highlighting like this, which is hard. And if you tie in too long, you're gonna have further to fall, which makes for a harder fall and more leash to climb back up when it's time to climb the leash. So if you walk with the leash on the outside, you're gonna need a longer leash. If you walk with the leash between your legs, it doesn't need to be as long. So lately I find that I like tying in shorter because on looser lines, you tend to have steeper sections and it doesn't hit the back of my foot as much. But if you're gonna do a double backflip, by all means, make it as long as possible. A not exact science way of doing it is to stick this arm out and to put your elbow against your stomach and this is where you want your first half of the figure eight. You can find your own way of measuring a leash because they all come pretty standard in length. One way I don't recommend to measure your leash is to stand up and put your foot there to see how far you want it. I don't recommend that because you're standing near a cliff edge. Even clipped in, if you fall near a cliff edge, you'll probably hit the cliff. So find your own way of measuring your leash without doing this near a cliff edge. So your fifth step is to tie your figure eight. Start by making half of a figure eight. You twist it, you go around the rope, and back through towards yourself, creating a figure eight. If you didn't go around enough times, it'll look like an overhand knot. Then you put the tail through the bottom and the top loops of your harness, which I can't believe I'm going over because if you don't know that, you shouldn't be highlining. Pull the half a figure eight all the way to your harness and take the tail and trace the original knot. The end comes out there, so the tail will go there. It goes around, I go around. It goes through, I go through. It goes around, I go around. And then finally, comes out the top. You'll know if you measured it right based on how much tail you still have. Create your backup knot, you're gonna spin around the leash with the tail downward, and then the loop it creates, you'll put the tail up towards the top again. 
If there was a sixth step, it would be to check yourself. Make sure that your harness is double backed if it's not automatically double backed. Make sure you're going through two points of your harness. Make sure that your knot isn't way up here and only about a fist away from your harness. And then check to make sure your knot is right by counting parallel lines. Two, four, six, eight, ten, with a backup. Then have your partner check it all over again. Why is checking this so important? Because you're only going to tie in once. And if you fuck it up, you're going to die. And lastly, you can unclip from the pre-installed personal anchor. And now I'm all set to highlight. So let's talk about how not to tie in, which brings us to our next feature of learn from other people's mistakes. At my first Highline Festival, someone did not finish tying their figure eight, and they got to here, and then got distracted, decided to go out on the Highline, and then fell. I don't know how this held them, but it did. And there were a lot of people over there. How did they get on the Highline? And nobody saw that. Another incident was at Upper Yosemite Falls, someone scooted out three or four scoots out on the Highline, and realized they never tied in at all. How could that happen, you ask? Well, when you're super stoked about something and nobody's there to check you, shit like that could happen. Luckily, they realized it, freaked out, and scooted back. And on the International Slackline Association's incident report, someone only put it through the lower portion of their harness, and when they fell on it, it undid the automatic double backing, leaving them hanging by their knees. Their incident report, published in November 2016, said there were 13 leash and harness related whoopsies. So the moral of the story is to take tying your leash very serious. Forgetting to install your leash can be a real pain in the ass, and there's about five ways to screw up on tying in. Therefore, you shouldn't highlight. Hey, don't be a dummy and go do dangerous sports after watching a guy in his garage tell you how to do it. But make sure you go with an expert the first few times you go highlight. In the meantime, check out these other videos, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and please be safe.